Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access. My name is Rob and I am a Street Fighter noob. It's a series I respect and admire, but that sends both my thumbs and dreams of getting good crashing to the canvas every time I play. Until, that is, I recently enjoyed two hours of hands-on time with Street Fighter VI on PS5, a game that feels like a revolution in its approach to welcoming fumble-fingered newcomers like me, and a revelation in terms of how good it feels to pull off stuff like this. Here are five ways Street Fighter VI is perfect for new players. The first of which is the introduction of modern controls, which make executing combos far more accessible as they eliminate the need to remember all those long and difficult command inputs. The big change is the switch to a three button system, as opposed to Street Fighter's classic six button setup. Light attacks are on square, medium on X and heavy on circle, with specials on triangle and throw moved to L2. R2 is then used as a combo assist modifier. Hold this down in combination with either your light, medium or heavy attacks and you'll be performing combos so good anyone would think you'd been playing Street Fighter for years. Not only does this make fighting more accessible for newcomers like me, it also gives you a feel for timing and combat flow so that if you do fancy making the leap to classic controls in future, you'll have a certain degree of skill already baked into your muscle memory. It's worth mentioning what modern controls don't offer is a button bashing route to beating seasoned Street Fighter pros. While playing the game at Capcom's London office, I was still resoundly beaten by a player using the classic setup. But what it does mean is that victory or defeat will no longer be decided by an inability to execute a six-button combo, but instead by your timing, your management of the drive system, which we'll talk about in a sec, and how effectively you're able to turn defense into attack. The second way Street Fighter VI welcomes new players ties into the first. Modern controls feel designed for a traditional console controller, opening up Street Fighter to everyone, even if you don't own an arcade stick. The classic control setup is of course there and feels every bit as precise and deliberate as you'd expect. Experienced Street Fighter players will instantly slip back into their familiar rhythm of dismantling me one measured counter at a time, but being able to play comfortably using a DualSense wireless controller is for me a revelation. We've all done the claw when playing fighting games, right? That unique sideways controller grip you adopt with your fingers in the optimum position for doling out combos. Well, with Street Fighter VI, I didn't feel like I had to do that. With modern controls, everything I wanted to do felt within easy reach, freeing me up to act at the speed of thought. I should reiterate though, modern controls are not easy mode. Even fighting the AI can be tough on higher difficulties. Button mashing will not get you far. Modern controls, and by extension the ability to play Street Fighter VI comfortably on a traditional controller, simply level the playing field. The third way Street Fighter VI is perfect for new players is the introduction of new fighters. During my hands-on with the game, I got to try out both Luke and Jamie, a pair of newbies with move sets that nobody knows yet, which means I've got as good a chance of winning with these guys as people who've been playing Street Fighter for decades, yes? Well, no, as evidenced by the ass-kicking you can see me receiving here, but playing with characters designed for newcomers, as Luke and Jamie are, feels like a sensible starting point. Both characters are capable of flashy combos and impressive throws, the kind that make you feel really good about yourself and that elicit gasps of amazement from anyone watching, and that are also relatively easy to execute, especially using the modern controls. Luke is an elite military mixed martial artist, giving him a flexible jack-of-all-trades feel, while Jamie is a dancer, which means flashy kick combos that are glorious fun to use and not so much fun to be on the receiving end of. Comparisons to a certain Tekken fighter will be inevitable, but this is a Street Fighter video and so we won't talk about that here. I imagine the comments will be seething at my noobishness as it is. 
We're going to talk about the drive system next, the silky new engine purring away underneath the hood of Street Fighter VI's combat. Mastering this will be the key to winning fights as you straddle the risk-reward tightrope of souped-up offensive and defensive abilities. You'll see the drive gauge underneath your character's health bar, and it's full and ready the second the round begins. Guzzle through it too quickly and you'll enter a burned-out state, which you can see lots in this video because I like to greedily and stupidly use all my drive moves straight away. When burned out, your character goes all grey and sad and they can't access any of their drive abilities while you wait for the gauge to build back up, so it really pays to manage the system far better than I've demonstrated here. Knowing when to hold back and when to go all out is what separates the goods from the get goods, a philosophy that's formed the core of Street Fighter for generations. The drive system is like a flashy evolution of that core tenet. Drive Impact is an ability you'll want to learn quickly. Activated using R1 and R2 on classic controls or L1 on modern, Drive Impact is a powerful move that absorbs an opponent's incoming attack. Really useful if you're backed into a corner and looking to shift the momentum of a fight. Then you've got Drive Parry, my favourite ability, which essentially blocks any incoming attack at the expense of gradually depleting your drive gauge. Time your Drive Parry to perfection, however, much easier said than done, and you'll actually replenish some of your drive gauge. Be careful though, as you can burn out quickly if you're overly reliant on this. You've also got overdrive, drive rush, and drive reversal at your disposal, each costing a hefty portion of your drive gauge to pull off. Ultimately, what the drive system does is educate you, often brutally, on the fundamentals of Street Fighter combat. Defend, attack conserve, unleash. This metronomic back and forth is the core of Street Fighter, something you need to practice until it becomes instinct. The drive system acts as a stylish learning tool for new players and a powerful extension of existing skills for hardened pros. Finally, we need to talk about commentary, which you might think is just an audio flourish, but in fact, was the single most useful thing for me during my hands-on, because the commentary doesn't just describe the action, it acts as an in-game prompt for what you should do next. In the heat of battle, when you're not always keeping an eye on your drive gauge, hearing a commentator tell you you're about to run out of juice can be a lifesaver. Commentary, then, is both a handy in-game tutorial for new players that enables you to learn while you fight, and also a fan-pleasing addition for experienced players who can enjoy the atmosphere of tournament fighting and the voices of Street Fighter community favourites like Aru and Jeremy Vicious Lopez. All in all, Street Fighter VI is shaping up to be a formidable package. It feels fluid and responsive, looks stylish as heck, and for new players like me, often put off by the seemingly insurmountable cliff face of difficulty presented by previous games in the series, there's now genuine hope that with a little bit of practice and determination, we could all one day be mixing it online with the pros. Give us a like in the comments if you're a Street Fighter noob excited to get on board with Street Fighter VI, subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already done so, and keep your eyes peeled for more Street Fighter content in the run-up to launch. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.